Hello, this is Marco Volk from www.houseinvestigations.com. When ice dams get too large, the gutters pull off the home and come crashing down. Or the sun melts the ice dams that leaks into the soffits and travels behind the siding causing paint failures. Inside walls, water can also develop a personality and can travel a long distance. In this thermal image photography, water is traveling down the second floor bedroom exterior wall following the 2x4 wall studs. While in the wall, this cold water hits the floor studs and turns and travels under the master bathroom bathtub following the slightly sloped floor to the first floor kitchen ceiling where it accumulates and ultimately drips through the dining room fan into a bucket. The truth is that ice dams are not caused by natural occurrences but by house problems. Heat escapes into attics through small holes like can lights, ductwork penetrations, sewer stack penetrations, and also through large holes and gaps at chimney floor fire penetrations, attic pull-down stairs, whole house fans, and attic access panels. If these areas are not sealed, insulated, or caulked, ice dam formation and energy loss is the outcome. Some holes are much harder to find. The fireplace or chimney code requires a 2-inch gap at all floor penetrations. The smoke tube shows how these gaps print hot air to rise from the basement to the attic. Small and large holes on upper floors can also permit condensation and mold problems on the attic sheeting. If the indoor humidity is too high, you will usually see condensation on your windows when this is occurring. You will need to lower the home's humidity and fix all the holes. The air on these upper floors is also being forced into these small and large holes by the HVAC system and the house stack effect. Builders do not seal cold air returns, especially in basements and crawl spaces. These holes are usually very small and are found at the metal duct joints. These holes add up to one large big hole that sucks the air out of your basement, which means that extra cold winter air and extra summer hot humid air will enter. This unconditioned replacement air will come from other basement holes like the main gas line, the main electrical line, the AC suction lines, cable lines, and other lines that travel to the exterior. You need to seal these holes as well. Some furnaces actually have large registers in the basement return duct plenums which permit negative basement pressure. Turn on the HVAC system and place a piece of toilet paper at the bottom door gap that leads to the basement. If the toilet paper flaps and sucks down, then your basement sucks and the upper floors blow. Air is being forced in the upper floor ceiling small and large holes. Seal these basement return duct holes and open some of the supply heat registers to permit positive pressure in the basement. This will save energy because now you will not be sucking in cold winter air or hot humid summer air. This will also minimize the positive pressure in the upper floors. Additionally, if your upper floors lack return ducts, keep the bedroom doors open. If your furnace is located in an unconditional space like a cold garage or an attic, you probably are losing 30-40% to 40 of your energy, not to mention major ice problems. These homes are the ones that usually never have any snow on the rooftops or have spotty roof melt patterns. If you have HVAC ductwork that runs through the attic space or a bathroom fan that vents into the attic or even a dryer vent that vents into the attic, you need to seal these connections, exhaust them to the exterior, and finally add insulation over the duct runs. If you have can lights on cathedral ceilings, the insulation may be stuffed in the rafter space and the cans may heat up the roof or air may escape into the attic light penetrations. Get rid of the old can lights, insulate the holes, and install surface-mounted lights. Some ice dams are found on windows and window sills. These are caused by high indoor humidity, usually caused by an HVAC humidifier, a moist crawl space with a poor vapor barrier, a ventless heater, or a poorly vented dryer vent. Interior dryer vents and ventless heaters are one of man's stupidest inventions. If you do get ice dams, do not chip them away because you will put holes in the roof. Do not use chemicals because you will damage the shingles. Do not use torches or heaters because you will burn the house down. And certainly do not climb on an ice-covered roof. Be aware of the new breed of $195 energy auditors that dress up like doctors and hook up fancy machines to your front door. Ultimately, they will try to sell you new windows. 
How about the gutter contraption people who hang out at Pitch Alley at trade shows that grab you while you walk by? Do they These guys try to sell you gutter caps, helmets, guards, cover screening, sponges, mesh brush, and foam, and probably missed a few. Many of these products become gardens for mold and turn into ice dam making machines. Most of the time, you can eliminate most of your ice problems with one roll of furnace tape, some insulation, a couple tubes of caulk, maybe a couple louvered doors. Additionally, you may have to open some basement heat registers to pressurize the basement, keep upper floor doors open, clean gutters normally, add a little bit more attic ventilation, and lastly, if necessary, add those gutter heat melting cords. Thank you. This is Marco Volk from www houseinvestigations.com. Please visit my website for more good information on your home.